What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Starport Delta. This is sort of a rapid fire beer and pretzel city builder that's meant to be played kind of rapidly and just see how far you can get before everything falls apart. It's simple, but at the same time it does require a little bit of thought when it comes to the placement of your buildings and how you want to do things. The general idea is that you're running a starport, your goal is to make money, your goal is to harvest materials, and your goal is to keep that starport running for as long as possible before it's inevitably destroyed. And trust me, you will die. This is one of those games where like, you're not exactly meant to build something self-sustaining that will last forever, although I'm sure there will be people out there that manage to accomplish that. It's a game where you're really kind of just racing against the inevitable. Uh, the game does have a campaign, it does have a developed set of tutorials, it also has like some of the challenge modes or whatever. Today we're going to be playing the sandbox mode. I did play a bit of the campaign. I found that it probably was in need of like a balance pass or they needed to take a look at some of the mechanics for the campaign. Uh, the missions that I played, the first one was pretty easy. The second one was remarkably tight on money and took me a couple tries before I beat it. But at the same time there was a lot of kind of sitting around. You'll see what I mean as we get into the game. Uh, but I'm not going to go through critique right now. Let's just play the game at the moment and I'll kind of talk about things as they come up. Welcome to Starport Delta, Commander. So here is our space station. I don't need you right now. Thank you, AI. Uh, so what we've got going on right now is we have our port. This is our starting building that has our population in it. There's also a criminal right there, so I'm going to capture him real fast. You can click on the buildings, and there's little side objectives right here where there will be, like, criminals or smugglers or other stuff inside your port, and if you find them, you get a little bonus. So we just got, like, 200 bucks for that. I saw him. We were sitting there. Uh, I need to turn on all of these grids right here. Like, literally all of these grids. Otherwise, this game is very difficult to play if you don't have the grids turned on. First thing we're going to need is power. You see that little yellow chunk that it puts on all the hexes that are around there? That means that those are powered by this power station. So we'll go ahead and drop that on in. That cost us $1,000, and it also cost us about 100 tons of metal, which you can see up here at the top of the screen, along with their associated balances, their budget balances at the end of the week, which is listed right here. Uh, this game is real-time. There is no pause, so you are kind of playing against the clock. I would suggest hurrying. The next thing we're going to need is a little bit of oxygen. And I think that's probably the most effective place to put it. The final thing we need is a bunch of foodies. So in order to get the maximum amount of supplied areas, I think I'm going to put the food right there. That may not be the most efficient way to do it. I haven't actually figured out the perfect grids or anything else like that yet. But these buildings do get upgrades. I can't pause the game by hitting escape. So basically, if you put these buildings in a triangle, if you click on them, if you build them in that arrangement right there, they'll combine into like a mega version of that building. I haven't done it with any of the support buildings, but I have managed to do it with like some of these right here. And so like, let's say we put a house right there, a house right there, and a house right there. What you'll see is that they will all morph together, and now we have a super house on that spot. And we'll get bonuses for having that super house right there, which is an extra 24 people can live inside of it. So it's usually a pretty good idea for you to be building super houses when you can. One thing that you'll notice is that we have a budget deficit. I'm sorry, not a deficit right now. We have a budget shortage right now. That's because these three buildings require upkeep. However, as our population fills in here at the top right, what you'll notice is that this number will creep on upwards and we should be in the black pretty soon, but it's going to take a little while. This is a game that, like, it, it's an odd game. It's a game that's sort of at war with itself because it's a rapid-fire game, but there is a lot of sitting around in this game waiting to have enough money to do, like, the next thing that you want to do. And so it's kind of a curious game in that regard. Over here we have power and oxygen. That would make these really good for mining areas. Over here we have oxygen and food. I don't think that's going to be inherently that helpful, but we'll figure it out as we go along. One thing that I would suggest is that we should probably put in some defensive lasers at some point. Point, just to kind of protect the colony uh, from aliens and invaders and all that kind of stuff. The downside is we got to find a spot where it'll cover pretty much everything. That'll cover almost everything. You know what it'll cover because it puts that little red chunk on top of the hex. Actually, that's one of my favorite things about this game is how all the information that you need is displayed on the hexes automatically. That's really, really good UI design right there, especially since everything in this game is so dependent on you know, having things in the right spot with the right resources available. I'm going to put in a... I don't know if it'll cover that building right there. I can't see if that one's got a chunk on it. I feel like it should cover that building right there, but I've got a feeling I'm going to be disappointed. So my guess is that we're going to have to build two of these. 
That's what I'm thinking, is we're going to have to have one like... Let's say that I put in another power building right here. Unidentified spacecraft. All right, well, let's just build the defensive turrets. Let's just build the defensive turrets so that we're covered. There we go. So we got two defensive turrets now. The next thing that we're going to need is an energy shield. It'd be a really good idea, but we're about to get evaded by hostile pirates. And so these guys, there they are right there. So as you can see, our defensive lasers will shoot down the pirates. And in fact, I am glad that I put that gun right there because if I hadn't, that one wouldn't have been able to make the shot. And then we would have lost that food farm. It would have crashed our entire economy. And then we would have died horribly. It would have been the worst. Trust me. You don't want things to go wrong in this game. Uh, you're pretty much building chains in this game, and when the chain is dis disrupted, you have big, big issues on your hands. You really don't want the chain to be disrupted if you can help it. Uh, the debris from those spacecraft right there is going to stop me from being able to build. I haven't quite figured out how to clear debris just yet from spacecraft. So if a building is destroyed or if a spacecraft is destroyed, it puts debris on that hex. I don't know if the debris can actually be cleared or if that's part of the challenge of the game is building around all the debris that's in spots where you don't want it to be. Uh, I haven't seen any building that clears the debris as of right now. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bulldoze that laser right there because it was in a really, really good spot for housing. And I'm going to put in housing. No, we're going to be fine. Shut up, AI. We're going to be fine. Uh, that thing pops up like every eighth of a second. Just ignore it. Like, literally, it will constantly be saying that the sky is falling, like Chicken Little, and just being like, Oh my god, you're out of space buck money! You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You're gonna be okay. As soon as we get this economy set up, we're not even halfway full on population right now, and we're already at almost a plus 400. We are gonna have to look into fixing our metal problems right now. We're not getting enough metal to really make things work, but metal mining is really, really expensive and doesn't produce that much money, and so I want to make sure that our economy is nice and strong before I start messing around with that. You've also got a score right here so that you can kind of passively judge how well you're doing on one playthrough versus another playthrough. We are going to need more power really, really soon, and I hate the fact I was going to put a power plant right there, and there's debris on top of it now. I'm really kind of disappointed about that. I don't like it at all. It upsets me. They really kind of messed with my plan there. I don't feel pleased about it. So we've got power over there. If I put that right there, the power grid will be extended. We'll get a little bit more room for housing. Yeah, let's go ahead and there's an increase in meteoric activity. Oh, man. It means i got to put in shields. Hold on. So we're going to need a shield like right there. I think that's covering the entire area. Yeah. So the shield protects us from meteor strikes. The meteor strikes are going to come in really, really shortly. Unfortunately, we've got environmental hazards at the moment that are going to be messing with our building process. So, yeah, there you go right there. I'm glad I built it. I was going to wait a second longer, but I'm glad that I didn't because we would have gotten flattened, my friends. I'm going to put in a power plant right there. We've got a few more grids right there that are looking okay. It's fine. You don't have to tell me that I'm low on space bucks. I wish you could disable her because she gives you advice that you don't need. Like She'd be like, you're low on money, but you're running like a 1,000 surplus. You'd be like, yeah, but I'm going to get it all back in just a minute. Like, it will literally be 45 seconds before we're flush with money again. Calm down, AI. Calm down. Uh, we are going to need another shield down here because it looks like this little dude... No, it looks like he's covered. Never mind. Uh, if we build in this direction, we'll probably be in better shape than if we go in this direction. We are going to need another laser tower over here. Yeah, let's put in another laser cannon right there just in case. It's going to get expensive. But it's okay. We've got a surplus. We'll be all right. I think what I'd like to build now is we do need to get some metal up and running. Metal can only be built, or metal mines can only be built on tiles that have oxygen and power. So I think if we plop an oxygen generator in, like right here, we can put a metal mine in right here. That'll pop us on up to plus 13. And considering most buildings cost between like 50 and like 1,000 metal, you kind of want to have a surplus on metal. It's a good idea. Just let it tick up for a little bit while you're working on other stuff. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to put an O2 generator. We have power right there. Okay. We've got unidentified spacecraft again. Funsies. I wonder if this guy right here is covered. He might not be. We'll have to wait and see. We're about to be attacked. I'm going to let my money tick up for just a second. I got a feeling they're going to attack the shield right there. Mm, 
No, we appear to be okay. We're all right. Unnecessary panic, I suppose. Uh, let's go back and I'm going to grab some oxygen over here. There's a little bit of O2. It's still covered by the shield, which is really, really good. We'll set up another grid over here for building or whatever else we need, but I just wanted those two slots right there for mining. That's pretty much all that I was interested in. There we go. So now we've got plus 37 metal. That's a very, very good thing for us. There's a number of things that you can do with the metal. Uh, what the metal will do is that you can either sell it, so you can set up trade contracts and stuff like that. Uh, you can also use it just for building buildings. Other than that, I haven't gotten too much further into the game, though, so I couldn't honestly tell you where it's going to go from there. All right, so we have oxygen over here. Now I just need a spot that has power. Oh, I may have actually screwed myself. One of these metal mines might have to go. I don't want it to, but I think it might have to. Yeah, I think we're at the bulldoze this guy right here. Weak. We'll be able to rebuild it in just a minute. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal, but there we go. And so now we will rebuild right there. Looks good to me. All right, so we got metal mines ready to rock. If we can put a metal mine right there, they'll combine into a mega mine. That might actually work out pretty good. And that would allow me to free up this slot right here for something else. Are we being attacked again? Man, I'm always being attacked. It's the story of my life. Uh, the gun right there is not covered by the shield, which sort of worries me too. We could plop down another shield on this side. I, I think in this case, it's a really wise idea to build the shield way out this way so that we can plan what we want to do with this interior stuff. And also, all of the interior stuff will inherit the shield status from this building being right here. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Cover that gun up, and then everything around here will be protect or protected too, so that'll be really nice. So I need oxygen over there. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. I'm kind of curious what happens if I drop two more oxygen generators right here. I want to see what the upgraded oxygen plant looks like, but I feel like it's going to be expensive. Eh, let's YOLO it. Whatever. We're doing it for science. Dude, you get a considerable boost to the radius of everything when you do that. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Oh, that's sexy. Okay. Well, let's finish off the mine right there like we planned. So now we have a mega mine, and it's producing 49 right there. I would suggest that we put in a defensive cannon over here somewhere just to kind of protect this area. I want to get the maximum amount of mileage out of it that I can, though, so we'll put it right there. We're still covered by our shields. I do like how the buildings kind of blend together and it becomes like this weird mega sci-fi metropolis thing. I do wish there's some, there was some variability in the buildings, though. So I wish that the buildings, like if you built three houses in a row, I wish that the three buildings would have little things that are different about them. They wouldn't look all stamped out and manufactured. I love it when games have variability like that. It makes me happy. I think we're going to need some more housing pretty soon. We're also going to need some new farms pretty soon, but I have a plan. Money may get tight for a little bit, though. There we go. So now we have a mega power plant, and you can see how far out that's spreading right there. That's pretty good. That's not bad. And then if I can put in, like, a mega farm, like, right here, maybe? It's not covered by any of our guns, but... I think, well, I wonder if the pirates always attack the outside edge of the colony or if they can attack on the inside of the colony. Because as we build outwards, we could delete these turrets and put them on the outer reaches of everything. That does seem like an option. Yeah. I'm going to let money pile up for just a second, and that to me I think is one of the principal problems with the game, is that you can spend a lot of time just like sitting around waiting for things to be ready. We killed out those pilots super easily, but I, I feel like I spend a lot of time in this game not having enough money and just, like, waiting. Even though I've got, like, a really, really big surplus, I find that I end up sitting around waiting a lot for the money to come in effectively. Uh, you can supplement that a little bit. So it says we've got a radiation warning somewhere. That means one of our power plants is leaking. Yikes, almost got us. And so there's the leak right there. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to fix it. Feels bad. Yeah, because there's nobody working in the slot where the radiation leak is, I can't quarantine it. So we'll just kind of have to wait it out for a little while. Uh, we do have some metal coming in. That's a really, really good thing. 
We do have a few extra spots over here where we can make a big metal mine too. Another big metal mine anyways. We've already got this guy over here. What is it producing? Like this thing's got us. So we've got one over here and it does like, what, 13? Oh, I deleted it. So that thing by itself is doing 49. Damn, this dude over here just pooping out the metals. Okay, I feel it. I feel it. Uh, you'll notice the little mining barges actually go out, and then they mine off of that rock over there and come back. It's pretty cool. Like, they go over there and they laser the rock a little bit, and then they come back and drop off the metals. Like, the stuff that happens in this game doesn't just happen in a vacuum. Like, there's actually little actors that are, like, leaving, you know, the buildings and going out and doing stuff and coming back. Which I think is a nice little feature. It makes the game look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. But this is, like, a really, really simple game. I wouldn't expect a shit ton of depth out of this one. Um, because it's just not gonna happen. We just got done with an attack. I'm gonna build a food farm over here, and I just wanna, like, see how this goes. So we'll do a mega farm right there. There's our mega farm, and dude, look at all that space right there that we're able to work with now. Like, we can literally do anything with all of this space, and that's a good thing, because in fact, we're gonna have to. Um, I need to get some actual, like, mega population centers built. That's okay, we'll get there. It's okay. We're going to get there. Don't worry about it, AI. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to live through this. Everything's going to be all right. And look, now we've got plus 61 coming. That's enough to build a building every single day. We just, we're going to get on top of it. I'm just conquering one thing at a time, AI. I do wish I could turn her off, though. I really do wish there was a switch in the options to just be like, shut up, and just like play the game. All right. So we have 33 buildings right now. What are our objectives? We want 50,000 spake bucks. We want 8,000 tons of mining materials. We need 3,500 population, and we want our station to cover 200 tiles. I'm, I'm working on it. Thank you, AI. I appreciate that. Uh, one thing that I do wish is that I wish that maintenance would, like, auto-complete on buildings. So you've got this little button right here, and you've got to click on this, and then you click on the buildings you want to repair. If you notice, they've all got structural integrity. Our older buildings over here are probably going to start to get a little bit rough. Yes, 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 I know. We are low on materials. The sky is falling. Everything is terrible. We're all going to die. So on and so forth. I think we're going to need another shield over here, too, to protect these. We've got a shield over there, so we kind of need a shield, like, right here. We're not low on materials. We have a 61 surplus. In what universe am I low on materials? We're fine. We're good. What I really need is for you to stop panicking. Unidentified spacecraft coming in. I'm going to build another laser cannon, like, over here, just in case. See, that message gets really, really annoying, and there should be a way to disable it. Like, it just sits there the entire time you're playing the game, because, like, the economy is tight in this game. It really sincerely is. I know! There we go. We have defended the colony successfully. Our housing took a little bit of a scuffing down there. It's really unfortunate they attack from that side because now I can't build on any of those tiles that I just prepared. It's upsetting. There really needs to be a way to clear out the space debris. Yeah, 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 shut up. Uh, let's see. Like, it'd be cool if you could clear the debris and get, like, a little bit of money and a little bit of metal for it. Like, it seems like that would be a thing. Like, it's not even on the same Z... Like, the debris is not even on the same Z level as all of my buildings. But now these three tiles are, like, utterly worthless and we can't use them. Feels bad, man. It sucks. I definitely think that's something that needs to change about the core gameplay. I don't think the debris from attackers should block off the different squares or whatever. Because, like, we just prepped that entire area and then they attack and now it's worthless. Like, all these buildings are pointless now and it's just like... Aah! Re and also that message if it could stop popping up for an eighth of a second I would appreciate it I just I need you to shut up I just need you to shut up a little bit I tried going to the options 
and being and disabling both of these, it didn't work, unfortunately. She still just keeps talking. You can turn off the voices if you want to. I assume that that would help out. But I actually physically want the message to not pop up. It's a shame, too, because like this game actually is an interesting take on a rapid-fire, simple, yet complicated city builder. Like It's a simple city builder that requires thought and is very, very rapid compared to most city building games. But at the same time, it's got, it's got like these little bumps and knobs that you just keep bumping your elbows against that make the experience be kind of like, yeah, I wish that wasn't a thing. Yeah, I wish that wasn't a thing. Like, I play games like that every now and again where really the core idea and the execution are good. It's just there's, there's little things that are just like, why is that here, you know? Like, why do I have to deal with this? Why, shouldn't, why isn't this just automated, you know? I guess I could build a corridor. Do corridors require they need power and oxygen? Okay. Well, I guess we could make a corridor through here, although I'm still bummed out that we've, you know, wasted a lot of our stuff. How much does a corridor cost? Oh, I can't build a corridor through debris. Oh. Well, that makes things more complicated. And things need to be repaired over here. There we go. We'll repair you guys. An increase in meteoric activity. Alright, so I'm gonna need another shield like over here, I guess. I think we're covered everywhere that we need to be covered. Basically, I need to make a hard pass push through that central part right there. So, like, housing is never a bad idea. We'll throw in some housing. It looks like we need more oxygen over here. If I throw in an oxygen generator, like, oh my goodness gracious, we're being blowed up. I throw in an oxygen generator right there. We'll put in a mine right there because we do need more mining materials. Unfortunately, I can't capture the triple right there, which is really disappointing, but we're doing our best. We're doing our best. A couple more buildings on that side, but yeah, this is Starport Delta. I hope you guys liked it. It's a cool game. It just needs some adjustments. Like, I like the title. There's just little things that, like, there should be a building that sends out scrappers that clear out debris. They can make it take a while if they want. I'd be perfectly fine with that, but having the debris permanently, like, you can see how it's building up. It's kind of getting in the way at this point. And so I would like for it to... Oh, the debris went away on that side. What? Where did the debris... Oh, the meteors wipe out the debris? Oh my goodness. I feel like my eyes have been opened. Well, either way, thank you for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I would like them to add a building that's like a scrapper or something like that that gets rid of all the debris. Apparently the meteors clear it out and I just never noticed. But either way, we got some of our building area back over here, which I am reasonably less salty about. That means I can put in another mega complex on this side, which will be like, the boobies! It'll be amazing. That's all that I ever wanted was another mega complex. Oh, never mind. It looks like it's still obstructed, even though debris's gone. Interesting. All right, well, anyway, Starport Delta. Check it out down below. The game's going to be coming out really, really soon. Uh, it is a cool idea, and it is executed well. It's just little adjustments that I think need to be made to some of the some of the core irritations, I guess. Um, I do think that the campaign needs a bit of a balance pass, and I, I do think there are various things in the game that probably need to be polished a little bit more. But it is an interesting concept for a game. I will see you all later. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit it with a like. Helps me out as a content creator. Aside from that, I will have something hot and fresh for you tomorrow. If you don't know who I am or where I come from, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie gaming so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block with Starpoint Delta or Starport Delta. And I'll have something hot and fresh for you tomorrow if you're interested in indie games. How you doing? Take care, everybody. It's been a blast.